Yeah. Eric, we're going to ask a quick question of you. Obviously, you grew up around the short tracks of the Midwest, as we mentioned, Rookie of the Year down at the Ileana Speedway. Got your, got your start with, you know, really moving up career-wise once you got involved with the NASCAR Autos on the Elite Divisions. A couple of great opportunities, not only the Driver X program the first year, but then the second chance with the Discovery Channel. Now, from where you were, you can ask Matt when you get back to the shop. He's probably going to say, yes, that fat guy in Minnesota, he never shuts up. That's great. Don't you worry about that. But anyway, uh, Eric, just a quick question. The ascension that you've made just over the last few years, you know, running all the different autos on the Elite Series, then all of a sudden put into the Driver X program. You jump into the Craftsman truck, great success there. Jack Roush calls you at the end of the year and says, we're going to move you up from the Truck Series into the Nationwide Series. Obviously, this has been a rapid ascent for you. Is it sometimes almost overwhelming how far you've come in such a quick time? Yeah, definitely, especially coming you know, local short track level, um, just like pretty much all the guys out there nowadays that have come. Um, I just feel very fortunate uh, that I was able to go out there and uh, and run and do that kind of stuff. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of talented drivers out there who might never get the opportunity, like I had, to even go run the late models. Um, you know, so I, I feel fortunate that I, I got the opportunity to do that, got the opportunity to travel around the country a little bit. Um, race in the southeast, kind of race, them, I guess, in front of some of the NASCAR folks at that time, and uh, and get the opportunities that I did. Um, I think it just it goes to show that that um, you can get that opportunity. You know that opportunity is out there. Um, I just feel fortunate that I've been in that position and I've been able to, to do what I've been able to do in, in the, these vehicles. Um, I'm just very fortunate that uh, the Jack here picked me up and, and uh, has, has kind of stuck with me. I know it, we had a little bit of a, a rough patch in the truck series there for a couple, or for one of them years, but <laughs> but uh, I mean, so far everything's working out. The nationwide deal this year I think has gone has gone pretty well so far. Um, and just uh, very glad. And speaking of your nationwide year so far, a couple of fourth place finishers, and I know there was a lot of folks at Elko Speedway sitting on the edge of their seats the night down at Darlington, where you ran second to Kyle for a number of laps and ended up with a top five. But we're glad to have both of you gentlemen with you. Mr. Roush, I've got a burning question, but I've got a gentleman sitting down in the front row that would absolutely kill me <laughs> if I asked this question, because he and I were thinking exactly alike. So, if you have a question, raise your hand, I'll come over to you, introduce yourself, please, and <clears throat> we'll go from there. I'm going to give him time to think. You might want to sharpen up that elbow because it looks like it's slipping a little bit. Young man, you uh, said you were going to have a question for Mr. Bill. Yes, I did. There's a couple of columnists in town that have a concept of Heaven's Video Store, where you get to have an eagle chance to go out and check out and see events that you may have missed. Is there some event in your life or some other racing life some other racers like some event that you'd like to go and check out and be able to see firsthand that you didn't get a chance to see to begin with? Well, I think that uh, growing up thinking that, you know, what we've learned in a short amount of time, you know, it's kind of like if I knew now what I knew then. And, uh, you know, it, it, I think back at the old Ford cars and, and uh, when they started oval track racing, the difference between then and today. Uh, it would be neat to, to opportunity to see some of those things and experience uh, some of those things like they did and, and the changes that have been made up until this point. Because it seems like, it seems like, feels like to me that all those big drastic moves are gone now. You know, now we're going to be fine-tuning uh, this thing the rest of the way. I don't think there's any big pieces left, it seems like. Uh, all those big pieces are behind us. And uh, that was kind of a fun era to I experienced in the truck series, you know, running from a, you know, 1,600-pound spring, and then, you know, six months or a year later, we had a 400-pound spring in it, so it was, it was quite a different, you know, culture shock that comes along. And then, now it's kind of uh, stabilized, I think we've learned, seems like we've learned everything we had, so uh, I think that would be a fun time. You know, in the 60s and 70s, when these guys raced these cars. Have you caught this steely eyed glare from this gentleman yet, Mr. Roush? He has been thinking of this one since two weeks ago, he told me. So be ready. This, this is one I don't envy you on. Mr. Roush, when do you uh, plan on a 
announcing what driver and team they're going to be eliminating from the race team. <laughs> disappointment to me uh, when they said they wanted to do that because, you know, the, normally uh, in, in NASCAR racing and stock car racing generally, you'd like to think that, that uh, sound investment and in time and energy and dollars uh, would help itself an opportunity to, uh, to be competitive and maybe uh, to, be, to improve your plight from a business point of view. And so I felt that uh, since I was the only five car team, that NASCAR was discriminating against me and uh, we looked at the prospect of uh, one of the and trying to adjudicate the matter in a, in a more, a more uh, a normal way as far as the uh, broader population of society is concerned. But if you go ahead and put NASCAR in a situation like that, you have to take it that even if you won your loss. And I, I hadn't decided that I wanted to quit yet, so so we decided we'd find a way to make it work. And uh, anybody that's been watching real close knows that I've got a, a, a close relationship with an old adversary by the name of Robert Yates. And that was uh, that was a uh, an association, a partnership of convenience for a number of reasons, not the least of which is to have a nice soft landing spot for one of my race teams. We built uh, we built all the cars uh, for that program for the Yates organization. We provide the engineering for it. The template set that Robbie Reiser and the guys have developed for our size of our crew and the size of the, uh, the, the various departments that prepare the cars, that template set applies. So I can move the team over there and, uh, and still the economies of scale in terms of the number of the cars that go through our, our body building and our chassis building shop. The engines come out of the uh, Roush Yates engine shop. So it, uh, it's really, a, a, we've got it worked out. Since NASCAR did give me enough time to get ready, there won't be, I, I don't think anybody that's going to feel like they've been left out if they, if they get the tap on the shoulder and say we'd like for you to run under the Yates banner for this year. But there's, a, there's, there's the 26 car is, is the one that's likely to get, to get moved over there based on the relationship we've got with Crown, which is very good, and the relationship we've got with Jim and Murray. So I think that's what's likely to happen, but the, the, this economy is affecting all the teams and all the businesses in ways that are not just clear. And uh, we may be in a situation for lack of sponsorship when I won't have a team anymore next year. We, we may be forced into a reduction because of the economy. But, uh, I hope that's not the case. I hope that we can have uh, five teams that have already been in the Ralph Fenway program still all pretty much doing what they've been, been doing, except some of the guys have been wearing a black uniform and some white uniform. Did I answer your question? I'm trying to be politically correct. I actually have pretty strong feelings about that. I don't want to do it. Jack, I told you it was a doozy. We've got another question in the back. 